پہن کے لڑنا اور وہ آپ گلوز پہن کے باکسنگ جب کرتے ہیں تو اس لیے گلوز پہنتے ہیں تاکہ ایک لڑائی کے وقت یا مارتے وقت جو ہے کوئی ایسی چوٹ نہ لگ جائے جو کہ مطلب اس کا علاج مشکل ہو جائے تو انگریزی میں کہتے ہیں کہ گلوز اتار کے لڑنا کہ آپ نے جو ہے اب کشتیاں جلا دی ہیں پاکستان یہی کر رہا ہے پاکستان نے اس وقت گلوز اتار دی ہیں انٹرنیشنل لیول پہ جو ہمارے ڈپلومیٹس کر رہے ہیں وہ تو کر ہی رہے ہیں لیکن جو ہماری خواتین ڈپلومیٹ ہے آپ حیران ہوں گے مجھے اس پچھلے ہفتے موقع ملا پاکستانی خواتین ڈپلومیٹس کو دیکھنا دیکھنے کا اور کس طرح وہ للکار رہی ہیں بھارت کو انٹرنیشنل لیول کے اوپر یو این کے لیول کے اوپر پچھلے ہفتے میں نے آپ کو ایک ہماری سینئر سفارت کار ہیں جو کہ پاکستان کی پرمنٹ مشن ٹو یونائٹڈ نیشن جنیوا کی ممبر ہیں محترمہ مریم ڈپلومیٹ ہے وہ ان کی یہ کلپ چلائی تھی ہم نے پچھلے ہفتے یہ ہماری فیس بک پیج پہ موجود ہے آپ دیکھ سکتے ہیں اس کو فل تو ایک تو وہ ہیں انہوں نے تو للکارا بھارت کو اور بڑا سخت جواب دیے لیکن اس کے بعد جو ہے میں آپ کو جو ابھی ویڈیو دکھا رہا ہوں یہ یہ پاکستان کی فرسٹ سیکرٹری ہیں پاکستان پرمنٹ مشن یو این جنیوا محترمہ سائما سلیم فرسٹ سیکرٹری محترمہ سائما سلیم جو ہے وہ بینائی سے محروم ہے اور انہوں نے جو اسپیچ پڑھی بریل کے طریقے سے جو کہ بینائی سے محروم لوگوں کے لیے ہوتی ہے اور کیا زبردست تقریر پڑی یو این میں یہ ابھی تین دن پہلے کی ہے یہ دیکھیں آپ ان کی تقریر Once again, the Indian delegation has sought to deflect attention from the situation in Jammu and Kashmir by feigning hypocritically concern about Balochistan. I will make three quick points on this. First, let me politely remind the Indian delegate of elementary facts of interstate behavior. Jammu and Kashmir is an internationally recognized dispute. The UN acknowledges Pakistan as party to the dispute. We and the international community have a right to address the human rights situation in the Indian occupied Kashmir. In case India insists on flouting all international norms and on pronouncing itself on the internal affairs of Pakistan, then we will need to address the situation in India as a whole. Mr. Vice President, this is a country whose ruling party is infected by rank communalism and outright bigotry. They openly espouse an ideology of the supremacy of one community over the others, a leading ideologue of the RSS of which the ruling party is the political wing had proclaimed quite clearly that Muslims, Christians and communists are threat to the nation. This worldview is deeply imbued within the ruling party and not surprisingly it is this ruling party worldview that led to the ruling party to the organized destruction of the famed Babri Mosque, sending a clear signal to one community about its status in India. It is clear that there are strong fascist tendencies in India and these tendencies are not evident as some fringe movement but lie at the heart of the Indian state and its ruling party. The ruling party in India has the despicable distinction of having presided over a bloodbath of Muslim in Gujarat where over 2,000 people were killed in an organized pogrom, the most that the then leader of the Gujarat state had to say in response to a question on any remorse that he may have felt was that it would be painful even if a dog comes under the wheel of a car. Today, the ideology of hatred and bigotry of India's ruling party is being expressed in brutality of the Indian forces in suppressing the people of occupied Jammu and Kashmir. We cannot allow this to continue. Not only do we need to immediately address the plight of people in occupied Kashmir, but the time has also come to squarely address the perverse ideology that motivates the governing party in India to perpetrate state terrorism. I thank you. I thank the distinguished delegate of Pakistan for her statement. Yeh Muhtarma Saima Saleem hai, jo ke first secretary hai Pakistan ki permanent mission to United Nations, Geneva. Or phir humari jo khud safira hai, aqwaam mutahida Geneva mein, Tehmina Janjua ne, jo is dafa, is hafte, jo paigam baharat ke baare mein, dunia ko sunaya. Wo dekhi. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Pakistan. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President, the Human Rights Council must use its multiple, multiple mechanisms to address situations of occupation where grave, systematic and widespread human rights violations are being perpetuated, such as by Indian occupation forces through its state terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir.
India has flouted all international human and humanitarian law obligations. More than 700,000 Indian occupation personnel are imposing with complete impunity a reign of terror against innocent civilians, citizens, uh, children, women and the elderly. The life and liberty of Kashmiris is governed by the draconian laws such as the Armed Forces Special Powers Act that are, allows arbitrary detention, searches, seizures, shoot to kill on suspicion and the use of lethal force. According to the Kashmiri Association of Parents of Disappeared Persons, more than 10,000 civilians have disappeared. In the last two decades, more than 10,000 women have been raped. Women of entire localities such as Kunan Pushpura have been gang raped. And when the Kashmiri chairperson of the Asian Federation against Involuntary Disappearances, Khurram Parvez, was about to board a, fly, a flight to Geneva last Thursday to speak at the council about these facts, he was prevented from doing so. Yesterday, 52 international intellectuals, including Noam Chomsky, have in an open letter called for his release and stressed that actions against Parvez are symptomatic of the escalated repression by institutions of the state. India obviously has much to hide. It is truly ironical that India, which has unleashed this terror and is sponsoring terrorism in its neighboring country, claims to be a victim of terrorism. We have given evidence to the UN Secretary General and to the international community of Indian involvement in terrorism and fomenting instability in Pakistan. This evidence provides details of Indian interference and support for terrorism in Balochistan and in Karachi, as well as its security and intelligence agencies linked with the Taliban in Pakistan. I Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, ye Mohtarma Maria, Mohtarma Tehmina Janjua, Mohtarma Saima Salim, or Mohtarma Malia Lodi. Malia Lodi, you know, she is UN New York. We are watching her every week when she was in the U.N. 